Welcome back to Dark Corner Studios. My name is Aiden Wolf. Uh, this is a bit of a different setup today. This is my computer. Notice that the computer is no longer hooked up to my monitor and stuff. That's because this thing decided to stop spitting out zeros and ones. And uh, that's a bit of a problem since I kind of rely on this studio to do stuff, you know, like, I don't know, videos. And by the way, if you're watching this, this video was a success. Uh, this thing, I'm guessing, it's the motherboard or the CPU. Both kind of have to go. They're first-gen Ryzen's. Um, I wanted to hold on to these these parts until next year when uh, the next generation comes out along with DDR5 memory. However, uh, it seems like I get to speed up the process a bit. So I'm upgrading this to third, second-gen, third-gen Ryzen, the 3000 series of Ryzen. I picked up a Ryzen CPU and a new motherboard. Uh, B450. I didn't go all ham, and a good reason for that. We'll get into that in a bit. But first things first, before we start rebuilding this, we've got to cannibalize it and get all the parts out that I'm keeping. So I'm just replacing the CPU and the motherboard here. The rest of it is basically going to stay. So uh, everything's got to come out, and we're also going to clean the case. So let's get to her. Okay, so first thing you can see here, it's really dirty. Uh, I do have some spare parts already that have taken out some of the RAM. Uh, I've also got uh, one of the NVMe SSDs. This is a brand new 3060 that I just picked up a couple weeks ago, uh, which I was really hoping this wasn't the issue with the build because <laughs> I don't think I could have taken that. Um, so we're going to just start taking this apart and we'll start uh, cannibalizing and keeping the parts that we're keeping around and get rid of everything else. By the way, uh, for this decommissioning and recommissioning, gonna be using iFixit. Uh, they're not actually sponsoring anything. However, if they want to sponsor something, I'd be more than happy to take them on, just saying. One of the best kits, if you like to tinker, these things are fantastic. My wife tells me that I talk about them more than her, and uh, I don't mean to, but anyways, uh, if you're ever doing this, Basically, all you ever need for working on a computer is a screwdriver. They say zip ties and all that stuff, but for the most part, it's literally just a screwdriver that is necessary. Let's get this graphics card out and out of the way so it does not get damaged. There we go. There it is. That's the Asus Tough Gaming. Oh, I left a peel on. Oh, I left the peel on. Ah, ha, ha. There we go. All right, now with the graphics card out of the way, basically we're gonna start unhooking things from the board because this board and CPU is what needs to come out. So obviously you've got the power, 24 pin has to come out. This one's sometimes a little more difficult. Don't you love those ketchup and mustard cables? Yeah, yeah, you do. Come on you, there you are, there you go. And also the A-pin CPU, which is two four pins put together. And then just the fans in the front panel connectors as well as the USB. board and it's looking a little worse for wear there eh? it's a little dirty uh this is one of the reasons i wanted to clean up but we're in a basement here and nothing stays clean in the basement all right uh we're also going to take out the power supply for now now this is something that i didn't think was going to be a problem this is just a 600 watt i thought i had a 650 and that might be a bit of a problem going forward because I think you need a 650 minimum for the 3060. So we're going to see how it goes. I don't mind the concept of getting rid of all these ketchup and mustard. Uh, but at the same time, I'd rather not be spending money on a brand new system right now. So eh, let's see what we can do. 
So let's get all these cables. Unrouted. Okay then. So for the most part, that's nice and clean. It's actually not as dirty as it looks until you look at that. So we're gonna actually wash these uh, these filters out and you can also see on the front of the case, uh, the front filter has also gotten quite a bit of, quite a bit of wear. So we're gonna wash those out and uh, we'll come back and once this is kind of cleaned out and we'll take a look at this from fresh and starting to put new stuff in. Good times. All right, it's super dusty in here. I'm gonna actually have to clean this uh, mic sock off again after we're done. My God, the dust is just incredible in here. Uh, that was a very dusty machine. That's part of the problem of being in a basement. What we're looking at here is, while that's off being cleaned, let's take a look at the new gear going in, starting with the motherboard. This is the ROG Strix B450 F Gaming 2. This is going to be a massive upgrade on the Okay, let me see if I remember. It was a Gigabyte Gaming, AB Gaming, three B three B three fifty. Yeah, B three fifty. It's been a few years. Okay, B four fifty F Gaming two. Uh, this has a lot of really cool stuff, including the ability to put more than four drives on a computer. That was the, one of the big drawbacks to my last board. I was only allowed four drives, which, with a lot of video ugh, and a lot of the files I was running. I just couldn't, I didn't have enough backup for it. And yes, I know I should be getting some backup storage. I do have some already, but it's been down for a bit. So I could use the extra drive spots. This also doesn't have Gen 4 PCIe lanes, um, but for the most part, the reason I went with these, and this is one of the things I was talking about with the upgrade, I really wanted to move up to the newer uh, 5000 series of Ryzen products with the B550 board or the, you know, uh, the X570. The problem is, is that's the end of the line for that AM4 socket. And while I wanted to go all ham, I'm gonna be getting a state-of-the-art computer that next year we're gonna have DDR5. And it kind of felt like I'm gonna be upgrading in a couple of years anyway, so I didn't wanna go all out and get top of the line. This will last me a couple of years and it will still be in great shape. It'll still be a great computer in a couple of years, but I'll feel a lot less guilty upgrading at that point. Along with that, I'm getting the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. No slouch of a chip. Uh, this isn't gonna be a, much of a problem. I was thinking about going 3900 because of the 12 core 24 thread, which would have really helped. I did once again want to go the 5000 series, but it's too much and I'm still gonna get a massive uplift from the 1700 to the 3700X. This is going to be a huge bonus for me. I don't foresee any problems with this. So let's get going and let's actually get the chip on the board and maybe we can kind of get this board half put together before we bring the case back in and get everything kind of reassembled. Take a look at this board. I've uh, been kind of excited about this one. Uh, I went kind of bottom the barrel for, for my last, um, Motherboard, so this uh, should be a bit of an bit of an upgrade. I mean, definitely for power delivery and stuff like that. This is going to be good. All right, let's just close this up and build on top of the box like you're supposed to. I almost forgot my strap. Okay, I got my strap on, so I've got that uh, plugged into my power supply. Power supplies on. I got it clipped to my power supply and power supplies on. That way, I'm D. Staticed, which I think Linus kind of kind of blew all that out of the water, didn't he? I think so. There you go. Once again, we got the Ryzen 7 3700X. So we're gonna open up that and you match up the little, oh, where's the, there it is, it's on the bottom. So this corner matches up with the little triangle on that corner. And drop it in, you're just gonna make sure it's not moving. Pull down the bar and it's secured. Look at that, nice 
the CPU is on. Now we're just going to take off these things so we can put on the cooler. These things become trash. Uh, there are some CPU coolers that actually use these. I've never actually had one. I've never actually had the ability to keep these things on. Every computer I've done has, uh, these have been throwaways. Oh, you know what, before cooler, let's do our RAM. Just in case there's any overhang. I got the low profile, the Corsair Vengeance uh, LPX. It's 3000 speed, it's my old RAM that I was using with the last, the Ryzen 7 1700. So it's not uber fast, it was way too fast for the Ryzen 7, but it's a little slow for this one. But uh, you know what, I think it should be okay. Okay, now that we got the RAM on, let's take a look at the cooler. Now this is the stock AMD cooler. I was thinking of going with something else, but because I'm not really overclocking, I don't do overclocking, I don't do any of that. So this cooler will be just fine. Ooh, that stuff falling out all over the place. What's, oh my God, is this? Oh no, this is the one that uses those. Well, hey. <laughs> here I am talking about these, never used these before. And here we go. We now have a reason to use these. So let's put them back on. Take this off. Still got the thermal paste applied. Yes. This is just fine. You don't have to worry about getting extra thermal paste. This works just fine. Don't you worry about it, Airbud. So it's gonna go this way. Perfect. That was the easiest CPU mounting I've ever done. Look at that. Now, of course, we have the fan header here. We'll take care of that in just a few. I know I'll probably, you know what? I'll do it for the people out there that are screaming, do the fan. Let's do the fan. All right, so now we're gonna talk M.2. We got one spot there and we got one spot here. So let's take this heat sink off. Also, uh, remember the way that these go, eh? So usually when I take these off, I take them off and I put them down the same way like that. Okay, so we have a couple standoffs with those tiny little screws. Let's get those out. Ooh, a peel. Come on. There we go. Good thing I didn't miss out on that, eh? That would have been horrible. Okay, so we got these tiny, tiny, tiny little screws. We're just gonna put those off to the side. Now, first of all, this M.2 here is going to be the one that they've got the system on the uh, windows. I'm gonna put that in, put it down and put the screw in. Oh, I've got the, okay, I'm gonna wait on that because I still have the, uh, the heat sink for that. So first of all, this is my scrubber drive as I call it. This is the drive that I use to store all of the work that I'm working on for YouTube. Put this down. You ain't gotta crank these down, they just have to lay flat. So just be gentle. So then we're gonna take this and we're gonna take that little strip off. There you go. You can take the sticker off the actual SSD as well. I'm just gonna put this in here. First SSD is in, well, second SSD is in. First SSD, still waiting to get that. Be Quiet MC1 Pro. Now, the reason I bought this in case you're wondering, I bought the Be Quiet MC1 Pro. The reason I bought this is on my old system, I noticed that my SSD was getting super hot because this is where the graphics card sits. It's a 3060 and it was pumping out the heat. My SSD was getting up to 75. So this will give it just a little bit more surface area to kind of rid itself of that heat. It's not active, it's just enough to kind of, to keep the heat out, right? So it's for either single-sided or double-sided M.2. Oh, so this would cool the bottom. You put this underneath. 
Oh, weird. So if you take the card out, so if you've got a double-sided, which this one is only 500 gigs, so it ain't that big of a deal, but if you have a double-sided, you put this thing under like that, and this would attach to the bottom of it. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, all right, well, let's just put this in. We'll get the little screw for it. Now, the only thing I'm worried about is that I'm gonna have clearance with this, the Be Quiet MC Pro, because this is gonna be sitting on top of here, like that, I guess, it doesn't do anything. So it's gonna make sure there's clearance with the card here. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be fine, but I'm still like, this doesn't attach down with anything. I'm kind of weirded out by that. I guess it just sticks to it. So here we go. There. <laughs> A cooler. Okay, and we're basically done this. Um, nothing else really needs to be done before this goes in the case. So how about we bring back that case and we'll start putting this stuff together. Okay, now we have the case back. It's been cleaned up, uh, still a little dusty, but you know what? It's going to be good. Uh, if this is a new case for you, if you're swapping out cases, one of the first things I like to tell people, make sure your standoffs are in the right spot. You don't want to get caught with a standoff in the wrong spot that might short out the bottom of your board. Very, very important, okay? After everything's kind of cleared out, by the way, I also took out my hard drives. Uh, you didn't see that because I turned it around to clean it and I forgot, oh yeah, hard drives. So let's start getting stuff in. Now, first things first is we've got the motherboard and let's spin this in. But the, the problem with this is you've got this cable. This is the RGB cable coming off of the fan that's gonna be going down here. And that's a bit of an issue because, well, I don't wanna have a cable just running across the board like that because, you know, <sighs> that's not cool. So I'm gonna route this back through here and back through the bottom. Let's make sure we're not hurting anything. There we go. And then we can just place this in and it should just drop in. There should be a little nubbin down there. And that means it's gonna be secured in place. And because it actually has an included uh, back plate, you don't have to put the back plate in first. However, if it does come with a back plate that you have to install, you might wanna do that before you do that. The other thing that you might wanna consider is the eight pin plug up here in the corner. If you have that and it's hard to access, you might wanna plug that in before you secure the board down so you're just not messing with things, all right? got that we can do a couple things one is we can actually hook up all of the other small cables which i don't mind if i do because once you put in your power supply a lot of these small ones might be hard to get to so it's never a bad idea to plug them in now and the front panel connectors these things well if you have a magnifying glass you'll be able to see but every board is usually the same but you might just want to actually check your manual just to confirm you're putting them on the right one looking pretty good so far. Uh, so we just got to route this around to come through here and we can actually put the power supply in once we do that. Okay, so that's in. Now, um, when you're doing this, don't worry about pulling the wires too far through. Ah, get the mic over here. Don't worry about pulling the wires too far through because you're going to trim them back up when you turn the case around. So you'll pull them back through in a bit. So it's going to look a little messy for now, but you know what? Don't worry about it. We'll take care of that. Let's get that uh, power supply in. All 
right, then if you're at this point and you're like me, you've got to figure out exactly what cables you need to go through. Obviously you need the big chunk. It's 24 pin connector. Uh, that needs to go through. Also, this board requires eight pin P uh, CPU power. So you'll see the CPU power here. So these two are gonna be routed through their own ways. And then you need an eight pin PCIe for the GPU. So one of these two is gonna actually do quite well. So we'll route those through. And then because I actually have four drives, uh, I'm gonna have to route both of these through. This one will be for one. And then I've got another one here for the others. So this one's gonna have to power through too. So we'll get that uh, put through and we'll get them through the right holes and I'll be right back. All right, so you might've seen me. I don't know if I'm including the footage, but that nine, uh, that eight pin, I just had to get it done. It took me forever to get those in. One wants to go in, the other one doesn't, blah, blah, blah. And the 24 pin's usually a little simpler. It does have a 20 plus a four that you've got to kind of mash together here. They're, they do click together quite nicely, but the problem is, is sometimes getting them around and in, this can be a test in frustration. And I probably shouldn't have plugged in that. We can do it. I believe in us. There we go. 24 pin is in and bent around. So we've got the A pin CPU. We've got the 24 pin. Get this mic a little closer to me. We got the A pin CPU plus the 24 pin already done. Everything else is going to be the extra cables, which everything I like to just pile in here. Everything else you can kind of pull everything else kind of tight to make sure everything else is in here and fitting. Don't pinch anything off, but make sure it's all kind of snug and out of the way, especially for the fans. So you don't want this stuff sitting in the fans because that'll be a racket and you might break your fans. So let's get the backside done and then we'll flip it back over to get the uh, SATA cables in. Okay, so this is the other side that you didn't get a chance to see because I removed them before you got a chance to see me actually take them apart. Now, the reason for that is that there's not much to this side, but I do have a couple hard drives that go in here. Now, honestly, I love how Fractal Design designs their cases. Uh, I really do enjoy the design implementation of stuff like this. There we go. And it just screws in at the top. So it's kind of a toolless uh, removal, a toolless installation here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the cables hooked up prior to putting it in, because I remember this. This was a real problem for me as I was, once you've got everything in, it becomes a real pain in the butt to get everything out or get the cables on once again. So I'm gonna get those new cables and we're gonna plug in one. Now, in case you don't know, SATA cables, they're like this L. They've got this little thing sticking out and up. So you gotta line that up, be careful. When you're plugging these and unplugging them, it is plastic, meaning you will break it off if you were a little too rough with it. So just make sure you're careful with those cables. All right, first one's in, and it does look like a bit of a rat's nest back here, but don't worry. It's gonna look nicer when we're done, I promise. Here's my little one terabyte. This thing's a joke. This is the first drive I got with this computer along with the 500 gig SSD. I got the uh, 500 gig and the one terabyte because I mean, who needs more than that, right? <laughs> uh, I do apparently. So there we go. Beautiful, two hard drives in. Let's pull that around. So sorry about that. Uh, basically all I did was I brought all the SATA cables around and got the drives installed. And that's pretty much the gist of that. I didn't do too much else. Uh, basically from here on out, it's just plugging in the SATA drives and getting the graphics card in. Now I'm not gonna bother plugging in uh, the SATA drives just cause it's a mess of drives when you first boot it up. And I do have one of the SATA drives that has windows on it. And if it tries to boot through that, it's not gonna boot. I don't think it will because I think the drive might be corrupt. Regardless, we're going to go and we're going to try to boot off this drive here. That's the NVMe. So let's get that graphics card in and get that looking all pretty. There you go. Make sure that's back. 
I'm going to put this in. And that graphics card is installed. PCIe going in. There we go. Let's find out if she turns on though. That's the big, the big one. Does it turn on? Let's go back to the main camera for that. All right. Uh, my studio's a mess. You can see back there. Windows is going on. It uh, worked. So this is kind of a, a crappy way to spend my Saturday. That said, I'm going to be up and running for Monday, which is for the best. But you know what? Um, also kind of a good reminder that you never know. All eggs in one basket, not having backup, that kind of stuff can be really tough. Uh, I got lucky. I got a free video out of it, but it's also just kind of a, I didn't want to upgrade right now, but I am quite happy with the upgrade as it is. And I think in a couple of years, I'll be able to guilt-free upgrade. So thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks for coming along for the ride. If you like this video, hit the like button. Uh, by the way, I'm super tired. It's like one in the morning here. So that's why my not usual zesty self. Uh, thanks for watching. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you, if you really like it, try that other button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video where there's probably going to be microphones.